Hi guys, Michael here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the latest figures that was released by the Australian BS Statistics of the official unemployment rate or 7.4%, but I'm gonna get into the truth and break down the data and show you the real unemployment and underemployment rate. Let's get into the video. Now this unemployment rate is devastating and I feel for all of those of you who may be watching that have lost your job and I'm here to help guide you through these times and I'm here for you to give you some tips on how to get your finances in order and get through these hard times. The Australian Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, has even admitted the real unemployment rate is around 13.3%. And if he's saying it's around 13.3%, you best believe it's probably even higher than that. But at least he's admitting that it is much higher than this number that's been put out in the press. And there's going to be more income support for those after September. They've confirmed that, him and the Prime Minister and they said it'll be more targeted and to those that need it most. Now the Roy Morgan that releases more realistic and more reliable data has put the underemployment rate for June at a whopping 24.5%. That's right, 24.5% of the workforce in Australia are either unemployed or underemployed. This is gonna have a huge impact on the economy and all mainstream media they're putting out there there's gonna be a V-shaped recovery and it's gonna be okay. You know, consumer confidence is up and first home buyers are surging in in droves. Unlike the last recession that's, that was created by a financial crisis, this has been created by a health crisis. So some of those people that have been affected may have been in an okay position. They may have had some savings to weather the storm for a few months. But now that we're going into a second lockdown in Melbourne for at least six weeks, and we don't know if that's gonna be extended because the numbers are skyrocketing every day, the pain is going to be felt later and we haven't made it through it yet. In economics, there's something called the velocity of money. And say, for example, you get paid a dollar. Then you go into the store and you spend that dollar. That uh, business uses that dollar to pay rent and to pay his utilities. And then that dollar goes to the landlord who then pays the bank. So one dollar that's creating the economy can be counted five times and this is how they calculate GDP. Now that was a very simple um, summary and it can get a bit more complex to that, but that's just a very simple summary of how the velocity of money works. Now it also has another effect. If that person lost their job, they're not spending that money, that doesn't just affect them, that affects the businesses that they normally go to. Then that affects the landlord, then that affects the banks. And the, this becomes you know, just a spiral where people become more and more conservative and it just makes the recession go deeper and go for longer. Now I expect the unemployment and underemployment rate to continue to rise. And this is going to have a spiral effect on the economy. It's not going to be a V-shaped recovery. The stock market may have a V-shaped recovery because the stock market tries to predict the future, not what is happening right now and is driven more by interest rates and what central banks are doing to devalue the currency and inflation. So if they think there's gonna be high inflation and lots of money printing, that's good for asset prices, but it's not really helping the average Joe. So what I think is we're not gonna really start feeling the pain until the fourth quarter probably this year. That's when most people's savings probably would have been depleted. You know, they've got $1,500 in cash handouts um, from last financial year and this financial year. Um, who knows what's gonna to happen to JobKeeper and JobSeeker, but they said there will be more income support. And a lot of savings just would have been diminished. There's only so long small businesses can weather the storm. And you know they're getting $5,000 cash uh, payments to survive for six weeks, but they're probably losing hundreds of thousands, not tens of thousand dollars in revenue. So $5,000 cash is really just like loose change in the bucket. It's not gonna help. In these tough times, I urge you to look at your expenses. The three biggest expenses is housing. Find a way to rent cheaper, negotiate with your landlord, rents are plummeting. Find a way to, if you can, sell your car and, can, and hopefully if you're working from home, you won't need your car and you can just bike around and get food delivered. You can greatly cut your costs there and meal prep your meals instead of eating out. That'll greatly reduce your expenses there. And by doing that, you can start creating an emergency fund. You can pay off high interest debt and you'll be in a much better position to weather the storm is going to come because it won't be a V-shaped recovery. 
You know, we don't know if there's gonna be a third or fourth lockdown. We just don't know what's gonna happen. So you best prepare for the worst. So that way, even if it's not as bad as expected, you'll be in a great position. If this video brought you value, please like for the whole of the YouTube algorithm and comment your thoughts below. How do you think these unemployment and underemployment rates will affect the economy? And what do you think the real rates are? And subscribe for more awesome content on personal finance, savings, investing, and overall the Australian economy and the property market. I'll see you in the next one.